Welcome back to video two on the nutrition of watermelons. Now that we know more about what watermelon need and when they need it, let's get into why paying attention to your nutrient sources matter. There's a variety of nitrogen sources out there, but these three tend to be the most common I run across when working with watermelon growers. So we're gonna look at these using the good, better, and best approach. Urea is good when you're wanting your nitrogen to be in the soil for a while because urea has to break down and convert to nitrate to become plant available. So if you're needing that nitrogen right away, you'll wanna consider another source. Ammonium nitrate is slightly better because it is a combination of a form of nitrogen that's slower to become available because it has to convert. That's your ammonium. And it has some already plant available nitrate nitrogen along with it. The main thing to watch out for when using ammonium nitrate is that ammonium reduces the uptake of other very important cations like potassium, calcium, and magnesium because it's also positively charged. Your best source for nitrogen is calcium nitrate. It has both immediately available nitrate nitrogen and available soluble calcium. The nitrate, since it's already negatively charged, will attract beneficial nutrients that are cations like potassium, calcium, and magnesium. This chart to the right shows how uptake of cations is impacted by the ratios of nitrate to ammonium nitrogen. As the ammonium nitrogen increases in the ratio, there is also a decline in the uptake of these cations, which are very important for watermelon. Calcium nitrate reduces common watermelon fruit defects and improves fruit quality. Field trials in Florida have shown that regular applications of soluble calcium are needed to ensure that the fruit gets the calcium required to produce high quality watermelons. This applies to many different crops where calcium is needed for quality and we especially see those damaging effects of insufficient calcium in fruit crops like tomatoes with blossom end rot, apples where they have bitter pit, and other waxy fruits but a lack of sufficient calcium has an impact across all crops from lettuce and tomatoes uh, to strawberries and citrus. The bottom shows some of the various quality issues we can run into in the field. I realize hollow heart and blossom end rot aren't all calcium related and that water and pollination and many other factors can play into that too. But as you can see, when calcium nitrate is used, the instances of defects is significantly reduced. These are the most common potassium sources I run into in the field. Potassium chloride has a high salt index, which can impact soil and plant health, as well as the risk of chloride toxicity, which fruit and vegetable crops can be more susceptible to. Sulfate of potash is not the most soluble, but the salinity of SOP is less than potassium chloride. Potassium nitrate has a higher salt index due to its chemical makeup, which allows for it to be immediately available and highly soluble. Potassium is able to be more easily taken up when paired with nitrate nitrogen, making this your best form of potassium. As I mentioned earlier, in order for calcium to be taken up by the plant, it has to be in soil solution. Calcium transport is a one-way process and goes in the xylem with the water to the top and there's no way back down. When considering calcium sources, lime is helpful for managing soil pH, but it isn't very soluble. Gypsum is only slightly better, being just a little bit more soluble than lime. When applying either of these sources, you're basically putting the calcium out for your following crop year and not the current crop. Calcium nitrate is highly soluble and has immediately available calcium. I hope this was helpful in learning a little bit more about why your nutrition sources matter. If you have some more specific questions or would like to learn about the other nutrients, please feel free to contact me at the information on this slide. Thank you.